Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the weekly Jenkins Infrastructure Team Meeting. Uh, we are the 16th of November 2021. So today we have uh, Mark Hervé and hi Damien. Um, let's get started with the announcement. So I see that uh, Mark is updating. So the weekly release 2.321 has been released. Is that correct? It is. Do you want to share your screen, Damien? Oh, sorry, I thought it was already shared. My apologies. Okay, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, we see the split view. If you want to switch to the to the non-editable view, we'll... Yep. And yep. zooming in. Okay. So yes, the weekly release has been successfully terminated, finished. So we have packages and Docker images for the new, for today's weekly, is that correct? Yes, Docker, Ooh. Docker, War, uh, Deb, RPM, all verified. Uh, issues updated, so the, the release checklist is done. Okay, and Windows MSI as well? Uh, didn't yet execute the Windows MSI, but I've got it ready to download. I'll download it to my computer and check it later. Okay. Uh, cool. My question was because since we middle up, we middled up with um, the Kubernetes configuration last week, in particular the Jenkins installation for release and the infra CI controllers, we just wanted to double check that uh, there wasn't an issue with the pod allocation, agent allocation. Extra. And there definitely was not that. I checked the job status okay. and the job health showed that the job completed successfully. Nice. So great. now the mirror, the mirror status. I was a little surprised that mirrors were not yet showing. The, only the only one or two of the mirrors had the latest release. But that you know, it's it's unpredictable how how long it will take for mirrors to see a new release. So yeah, that's correct. Okay, so good good work. That means the infrastructure is still working as expected. Um, another announcement to had, uh, we had uh, last Friday during this long weekend, uh, we had a, a really quick security release on some plugins. So there has been a security uh, bulletin uh, published by Daniel. So thanks, Daniel. Uh, that was done in less than one hour. So that's really cool because it was short notice and everything went uh, correctly. So good job, Paul. I think that was the only announcement. Do we have other announcement on your side, uh, Mark or Hervé? Uh, hmm. Well, so it's a forewarning more than an announcement. Release candidate for 2.319.1 uh, LTS. That will The release candidate should be delivered tomorrow. The pull request proposal is out with the backports. Okay. And then two weeks later, December 1st, will be the release of 2.319 encourage people to test it. There are some changes in there and some backports that, that really do need thorough test before we, we deliver an, an LTS. Cool. Uh, we should add it to the, let me take note. Uh, we should add it to the, to the, cal to the team calendar. Mm, good point, yes. For both, for the RC. So tomorrow, 17. And next LTS will be 1st of December. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, is that all for announcements? Cool. Um, so first, uh, I saw today uh, that a few days ago, uh, Kosuki send an email, uh, sent us an email about the uh, TLS certificate for the domain repo.jenkins-ci.org, uh, which is uh, the um, uh, domain name used to point to the artifactory service hosted by Gfrog, if I'm correct. Um, so thanks, Mark, for answering to KK. Uh, that email thread uh, was on my spam, so that was... so. Um, if you, both of you, you see such emails, uh, that could be interesting to just ping the other, just to be sure, because uh, I don't have them always. So thanks for standing up on that one. Uh, KK opened the uh, case at gfrog directly through emails. 
at least uh, one on that one because it seems like there is another subject that I'm not aware of, but that crossed. Um, so that means for the certificate, I'm not sure we're waiting for GFROG since this is a managed service. KK ask them if they have a Let's Encrypt or Renewal on their own because the DNS point to their platform. So they should be able to generate certificate autonomously on their own. However, we haven't received an answer. Last time, um, as I understand, we had to generate the certificate and the key by ourselves and then send them uh, the private key and the private certificate to GFROG through uh, email, I assume, totally secured. So they can install the, the certificate on their uh, web server. So I don't know what will be the next step. Did I miss something or? Yeah, the, so the, the last reply from JFrog seemed to, or from KK seemed to indicate that what you just described was right and he's, he's working the issue with them. Okay. So if, uh, yep. if he needs to issue a key to them, if he, he needs to issue the private key to them, um, or if in our dreams they've switched and granted or can use Let's Encrypt. Mm -hmm. But okay. Yeah. I assume that KK has access to the DNS uh, records uh, for the domain because I'm not sure that there is another solution with Let's Encrypt since the DNS is pointing to the IP. If we switch the IP to KK's machine, that might break some things. Um, shall we ask him if he need help or if we take over on that part? I don't know if he, if he has time for that or not. I was just letting it run, but I, I'm open. Certainly, if you feel that we should ask him, I, I didn't see a, a lot of problems with it yet, but if KK asks for help or says, hey, this is a problem, we certainly don't want the certificate to expire. Yep. So it will be in March, if I'm correct. Right. So that should be better to do it before end of year. Um, okay. I will send in an email to ask him if he's if he has access to DNS or if he, he wants support or complete takeover. Um, yeah. Okay. And he pointed that if we have to generate a new certificate, the old one will be valid only for three days straight before be, uh, being expired by Let's Encrypt. So that means we have to schedule that correctly with GFROG because if GFROG take more than three days to change the certificate we send them, then that means a lot of trouble for us. Right, yep. And he mentioned, yeah, so that was described in the email too. So better, better to assure we've communicated with everyone on this timeline than to rush to do something. Absolutely. Exactly. We have to be sure that GFrog will be ready on their own. Otherwise right. that might start to be hard. Um, okay. I, I saw you added the DNS renewal of Jenkins CI org domain. Yeah, we, we can do it after the Helm okay. charts discussion. It's a low priority. Just wanted to remind and I have need to give myself an action item to put it on the calendar. Okay. Cool. Um, so for the certificate renewal for repo Jenkins CI org, is that all or is there any question? Okay, so switching to the next subject, Kubernetes Elm chart. So Hervé, thanks for the huge work you did uh, on improving the structure of the Elm files that helps to keep our environment clean. We removed a bunch of dead code. We updated the Elm charts. We have we have tried to apply some conventions over the way we use M charts and values. Uh, there are still some work to do, but yeah, that, that was a big change. Uh, we were expecting improvement and the ability to install the Elm chart in parallel to have a quick, uh, a quicker process. Uh, sounds like it doesn't work as expected. Sometimes it's even slower when we try to increase concurrency. So we will have to double check that. However, now the main work is around update CLI. Uh, that has to, we are doing a complete audit of the update CLI uh, manifest on the charts repository to ensure that it, keep, it keeps track of all M charts. And now we are working on all the Docker images because we start to have more and more uh, custom made uh, images. And um, each time there is an automatic release or manual release of these images, we want them to be updated on the cluster production as soon as possible. 
the main goal is we don't want to slow down the maintainer of these images. Each time they release a new tag with a new version, we want it to be automated as soon as possible. So that's the current work, it's almost done. That was uh, the past week. And that's the reason why we wanted to be extra careful with the weekly release today, because we had to remove old uh, unmade Elm charts and rely only as much as possible on upstream Elm charts. So great job, Hervé. Is there any question, point, something that I forgot about that area? Mm, about the update, no. Uh, the next point with the issue. Uh, I've uh, opened a pull request to fix the problem on uh, Kicklook uh, M chart. Yep, that's the link I've put on the description. Yeah, good point. Um, so please do not upgrade the Docker Elm file until we have uh, the key clock has updated their Elm chart. Um, their recent Elm chart, at least the latest one, which has been published in September, uh, is failing the lint step with the latest version of Elm. So this is outside our area. That's why I have opened the issue. Uh, so right now we have to fix the Elm version. Uh, it hasn't been done, but we should be able to release and uh, use update CLI to only check the 3.6 branch of Elm. That could be a safer way to avoid uh, merging by all. Yep, that's all. Hello, Oleg. Hi. Um... Hi. Happy to start um, joining from time to time, finally. Uh, do, do you have the link to the notes? Uh, yes, I do, but uh, yeah, I'm on the laptop right now, and let's say GitHub connectivity is not trivial right now. Uh, so, ah, okay. Yeah, I will need to re register because I have now two GitHub accounts and many other things I will need to adjust to. Okay, so it becomes habitable. If if you have any notes, share them on the Zoom chat and we will add them on the document since it's open yeah. on our missions. Okay, so next subject, Mark, I'll, I'll let you guide us on this one, DNS renewal of the world Jenkinsci.org domain. Yeah, it's, it's one of those where the Tyler Croy has automated processes that renew that domain. The renewal happens, I believe, roughly once every two years. It worked successfully with the automation two years ago. Um, and so I'm expecting it to be successful and I've set myself an alarm uh, to, to red flag it if we get to the point of less than 30 days to renewal and it has not renewed, then we'll escalate it to Tyler. Mm. Okay. Mm. Generally, do we have uh, any services left on this email uh, that uh, default to that? Because uh, since we moved to Wiki, Artifactory also redirects to Jenkins.io at the moment, if I recall correctly. Yeah, we have we have at least one. Repos.jenkins-ci.org is still. I, I thought uh, Artifactory is now. Yeah, I thought it's uh, now on Jenkins.io. Am I wrong? Uh, I, I I haven't tried it on Jenkins.io. Let's see. No, it's definitely not a repo. Let's see, repo.jenkins.io. No, it's definitely not. It's just repo.jenkins-ci.org. Uh, but even if, even, I mean, we need the alias no matter what, right? Because there are many old links that go to that old location. Yep. Actually, it would be nice. Uh, to, well, we will still have to keep them in for ages. Yep. Right. So, yeah, we we uh, we want to own that domain. We really do not want someone else to own that domain. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thanks. So we'll keep that. Uh, Mark, could you add um, a reminder like uh, 20, 30 days before in the team calendar, so everyone will be able to to have a reminder if uh, if you if you are not there that day. Will do. Yes. Thanks. Uh -huh. Something else about the renewal. That's it. Cool. So next topic, a uh, uh, word about the infra cost. Uh, so on the AWS parts, so we should be able to be around 10K or maybe a bit below thanks to the 
effectiveness of using spot agents. Uh, haven't seen any complaint yet about spot agents being reclaimed. So either we are lucky or maybe the strategy of targeting six kind, six, six different kinds of machines and letting AWS select one kind for us uh, might also help uh, because it automatically, it automatically search for one instance on that collection for the reminder uh, that is the most available available from AWS point of view under the, the cheaper because that's where they have most capacity for us. Um, so that that's a good objective, but it's not finished yet. The virtual limit is 8K per month, not 10K. So the next uh, huge win that we could have, we have a bunch of topic or elements that we could migrate out from EC2. However, if we want to to have something with the order of magnitude of the 2K that we are over consuming today. The next candidates in line is PKG Jenkins IO, which is the, because that machine costs us 3K of bandwidth uh, per month, which is a lot. Uh, so we should think about the destination for that machine. First, that machine will be split into two virtual machines in the future, because right now there are two main services there. But we have to check the bandwidth cost on Azure, but because Azure will be the easier for us. We can have VMs or Kubernetes uh, charts, which is good. Um, but also, so we have to see what will be the theoretical cost with that bandwidth on Azure, to first have a, an idea of the cost, um, and if we can afford it. Uh, reference to the next point. However, there were uh, there were also the idea that we exchanged, but that was purely an idea. So I, that was I'm taking that idea back to you to now. Um, that will be to create a virtual machine on Oracle, because the bandwidth is theoretically unlimited. The projection we did with Olivier is that the bandwidth should cost 50 bucks per month on the worst case which is completely crazy. I don't know how they make money, but yeah. And the second reason is that we can use IRM machine instead of Intel machine, especially because the use case that require that bandwidth is a web server. That's an Apache web server that serves files on a file system. So the costs of the machine and the visibility that it could give to the Oracle uh, cloud because they provide IRM machine, that could be interesting to maintain the relationship with them in terms of partnership. And the cost in terms of money for us is really a good win. So that will be the alternative. So I propose that we, we compare the cost, the theoretical cost on Oracle and Azure, unless you have other ideas that we could uh, ask for there. That sounds good to me. And I think you're right. It's the next win. Three three k euro for bandwidth is is a big chunk of our our total spend right now, thanks to the spot reduction. Exactly. It, 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 the next the next target becomes very obvious. Uh, so I don't know if there are other questions on that area, or things not clear, or counter proposal. Okay. The so the next cost is Azure. Uh, we are stable. It's been three months that we are at a, around 8K per month. So for reminder, the CDF uh, asked us to have an average of 10K per month because the, we have a budget for one year and the one year is uh, 120,000. So that means 10K per month. So we are now below the limit for the year, which is good. That means we have a margin there if we have to move services out from EC2, if we cannot for whatever reason. Um, however, given the effectiveness of the spot instances on EC2, that is also something we could add see, to see the impact of using spot instances on Azure as well, at least on the area where we can afford it, just to see the impact there. Uh, I've put the note about the new provider sponsorships. So I've started to work on uh, Terraform port. The goal is to have a, a thing. 
the same way to manage infrastructure, but one repository for each provider, one for Azure, one for AWS, one for the next ones. Um, once that part will have been done and applied to AWS and Datadog, that, uh, that, that is what we have today, then we can start the work for DigitalOcean and scale away. Um, we won't have more than two VMs on both, but that, that's a start. Uh, there is also some work. We have two machines that are sitting there doing nothing from the OCSL. The, for, the machine that we use for Confluence and Jira. So we can still reuse these uh, machines as well to stop paying uh, that much on clouds. And then there is the area of what we could start in terms of sponsorships in the upcoming months or quarters. Uh, I mentioned Kivo Cloud last week which provide managed Kubernetes based on CAFRI-S. And they are using Jenkins and they provide Jenkins in their uh, installation marketplace based on the official uh, operator. Um, and Hervé, I think you had something I've wrote, Nomad, but yes. can you remind me? It's a square square. It's a infrastructure provider. I let me... I've uh, I've met their lead tech uh, during a demo, and uh, they're using Nomad as uh, their um, engine. And uh, I think they could be really interested uh, with uh, sponsoring, as they are uh, seeking for uh, visibility. They are quite young, and uh, I think it could be good for uh, both uh, of us. I've put the link in the chat. Cool. So if I'm not mistaken, there is a Jenkins plugin for Nomad, for yes. Ashikorp Nomad. I don't know the state of it, but that could be eventually a, a good start with a stateless agent. Uh, I don't know. I, I have I have zero knowledge around that part, but it's a container orchestrator, so. And if there is a plugin, I assume that if they lend us a, a few capa a bit of capacity, we should be able to start agent dynamically on that part, at least on the paper. What do you think? It's a bit right because a nomad uh, is not necessarily designed for SaaS use cases. So uh, there is hyper variability that uh, the plugin I'm not sure I cooked. What do you mean it's not designed for uh, So if you want uh, to connect CI Jenkins IO to Square uh, via Nomad plugin, it's probable that uh, the plugin just doesn't support this mode. Oh, last time I used Nomad, which was actually quite long ago, um, yeah, we were using it internally. So not a SaaS option. Uh, where you ah, okay. have service externally, then you need somehow to connect agent by SSH, but uh, everything was directly accessible through the network. Okay. So I wouldn't okay. Uh, put bets on that until somebody tries it out. Okay, so that could be a great experiment. Arve, if you are up to the task, that means mm -hmm. uh, trying, I don't know if they provide free credits at least to build or contact them to tell them yeah. that we have that use case. and. I have kept uh, contact and uh, I can uh, I will contact them uh, ask uh, about it. Um, mm -hmm. I've uh, got uh, you um, transfers me uh, the previous uh, email thread about sponsoring, and I mm -hmm. I have to look at them to to find uh, argument and. Uh, uh, different uh, point I can give them. Cool. Things they uh, they will be. Uh, I think uh, they could uh, help us uh, if we have uh, troubles. Completely. Cost nothing to try. <laughs> I've added the link to Jenkins plugin uh, for Nomad. Mm -hmm. Sounds like that plugin is still mentioning the wiki. So worst case, that could be the opportunity to update the readme of the plugin. 
still worth it. So, yeah, maybe one quick uh, note about SIVA as we were discussing before. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, a couple of months ago, we had a meeting with Sayam Patak uh, and also with a few other people at SIVA. Uh, mm -hmm. And we discussed uh, how we could uh, actually collaborate together between Jenkins community. One of the follow ups that they updated uh, the default uh, template uh, to official Helm charts. Uh, so, this was done after the meeting. Also, we added it to downloads uh, Jenkins IO. Um, but uh, we still have an open uh, topic about uh, potential collaboration in terms of uh, hosting, maybe some kind of sponsorship, uh, maybe some kind of uh, ideas, because SIVA is a really interesting, uh, especially since it's probably the only Kubernetes provider where you can provision the cluster in just one minute or so. Uh, so it does, it's not uh, terribly painful as for any other vendors. Uh, so it could be a good opportunity. Yep. And actually, and actually, last week there was a week of CICD organized by Sayam Patak. So I was speaking about Jenkins there. It was a good Python presentation, Captain presentation. So the context is active, and uh, if uh, somebody in the Jenkins infrastructure team is ready to explore it a bit, I'm happy to use this context. Okay, in the context of the infrastructure, Jenkins infrastructure particularly, even though it's technically impressive, uh, the fast provisioning, we don't really have that need. Uh, it's more the ability to have a static, but still a good thing for Jenkins 6 usages though. Well, maybe some kind of preview environment would be nice uh, because currently we don't do preview environments in Jenkins anywhere. Uh, yeah, so that's that's, that's why I meant on the Jenkins infrastructure ports that that's completely legit topic. Uh, and I'd, I would love to have that on Jenkins. Uh, mm -hmm. But right now we don't have that need on the scope of the infra only. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but yeah, okay. Thanks for sharing that. That's good to know because that means they are also in position of listening and maybe uh, that could be a... yeah i believe i dropped it uh, somewhere in the developer mailing list but it was months ago so cool but that means they should remember us then <laughs> oh. well, uh, they do uh, jenkins is still uh, a part of the user base there are people running jenkins on siva and of course uh, taking the volume of jenkins and uh, emerging uh, things so they are interested to explore operators more. Nice. Like operator service. So they were quite excited about it. So there are definitely some elements. Yeah. Cool. Um, if it's okay for the infra cost topic, do you have any other question? Counter proposal? Okay, so move on. Kubernetes 1.20 upgrade will be the next major topic for us. So, Hervé, uh, you volunteered to lead that one. So, once we will have finished the end chart, we'll have to upgrade our two Kubernetes cluster to 1.20 line. The, the main being the public gates and AKS. Uh, with, which host our stateful applications, and the uh, EKS on Amazon that hosts the Kubernetes agents for CI Jenkins IO. So that one should be easier. Uh, so that will be the next topic. Um, nothing more to say about that unless you have a question or something clearer. Okay, and one last note. So thanks for work for taking care of the labels for the EBMZ, the agents on CI Jenkins IO. I saw the label update to avoid building GDK 8. Thanks, I totally forgot to work on that topic I should have had last week. Uh, so thanks for that. And expect the puppet cleanup. I started working that locally. That will be on many levels, uh, but we have uh, security issues about the Puppet dependencies, and we need recent Puppet modules. That's really important. So the first step will be removing all the dead and unused code. Uh, so to be sure that then we can iterate. And the next step will be 
either deleting the puppet test forever if we cannot find a solution uh, or upgrading them to something else because right now we are not testing what we have in production so the tests underlines error that will never happen and they are they did not cook the last free production outage due to puppet we had so these tests are worthless and worse we need virtual box to run this test most of the time <laughs> so this test had a meaning uh, on other contexts when puppet was managing all the the infrastructure which is only a few machines for us right now and being able to upgrade puppets would allow us to manage the power pc and ebmz and irm machines so i hope we should be able to to advance on these topics and that's all for me or for the notes do you have other topics to share to ask to mention well, okay uh, yeah, just quick question. Uh, are there any requirements uh, from the Jenkins Governance Board slash CDF with regards to infrastructure? So we we do certainly need. We're we're working on the assumption that our budget will continue at the 10K level for the next year, and we haven't haven't heard anything. So that's a topic for discussion to CDF. Yes. What, what's the sense you have, Oleg? Yeah, so regarding this topic, uh, so one thing I recently discovered that uh, a chair of the Technical Oversight Committee uh, is also expected to be a member of the Governance Board of the CDF. Uh, I'm still waiting for official onboarding. And uh, once I'm officially onboarded, uh, they have should have meetings in December uh, where they will be also discussing the budgets for the next year. Uh, so this is what I know. Uh, I also know that uh, Tracy has submitted a request to Microsoft regarding Asia sponsorship. If it gets approved, uh, of course, it will be a massive relief for us. Uh, now I can say anything about uh, the progress there. I have no visibility into what happens there. Uh, I should talk to Tracy next week if everything goes as I plan. Um, so, but yeah, currently there is basically a pending discussion about infrastructure in general, because uh, SDF would like to consolidate the infrastructure more, uh, including Amazon accounts. So again, no movements with regards to Jenkins uh, account transfer. Um, yeah, probably we need to bug Kara and to see whether it could be somewhere on her priority list. But I believe that she's busy with landscape and well, basically there is no program managers at the CDF. So if Tracy is not doing that, uh, it means that nobody is doing that at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but uh, I will look into. So uh, I will keep bringing up uh, these topics, uh, but yeah, right now I don't have any immediate updates. I wouldn't okay. expect that uh, there would be a massive drop because, uh, yeah, currently there is no churn uh, with regards to CDF members. Uh, I mean, paying sponsors. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, yeah, you may have seen uh, that uh, there are more organizations joining. So currently, it's not about let's say budget. It's rather about how the budget is uh, uh, distributed. And currently, let's say, yeah, Jenkins is the only graduated project, but it still consumes the vast majority of uh, the city of infrastructure budget. So, yeah, this is a tricky point about how things work. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to being on so that I can actually understand how the budgeting will, works under the hood. Cool. Thanks for sharing this insight. That's really important for us. And that uh, brings clarity on the way. Uh, where do we get money from? <laughs> That's really helping. Thanks, Oleg. Thanks, Hannes, for sponsoring uh, the Jenkins project. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Cloud. I had to say that uh, after the recent uh, news. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, we'll wait for your news.
So, okay, another topic uh, on the area? Yeah, I have one topic. Uh, I actually raised it some time ago at the governance meeting. Uh, so we are going over time. So if everyone finds just a quick question. Mm -hmm. So the Linux Foundation expects that uh, Linux community as well as other community adds uh, the account uh, to all GitHub organizations as owner. Basically, uh, from the project sustainability point of view. So, sorry, could you say that again, Oleg? I'm trying to, uh, yeah, trying so to catch. So, there it. is an expectation that uh, a Linux Foundation's uh, GitHub account is added as owner to all organizations uh, of projects who are members of uh, the Linux Foundation, including Jenkins. So, there was a request something like uh, one month ago from Tracy. Uh, there, uh, I said that please provide details. I didn't get any details by now, uh, but I know that, uh, for example, uh, in CNCF, it's a mandatory requirement for the new projects, and it will be the same way for the CDF at the moment. So my question basically to Damien as uh, yeah, incoming uh, Jenkins infrastructure officer, uh, etc. So uh what should be on the Jenkins community side should uh, such request uh, arrive i suspect it will be a major pain for us taking a private repository security repositories and determine the number of people uh, who have access to this linux foundations account uh, so with the current uh, situation, my understanding that uh, it goes against uh, how Jenkins governance and security practices work. Mm -hmm. I still need to discuss it with Vodek, uh, but yeah, I would expect that uh, this is a discussion where we really will need to uh, get uh, with uh, the governance board, with Vodek, Daniel, uh, infrastructure team, and to basically build at least a consensus how we approach that. Mm -hmm. So, on that area, there are still some area where even being owner of the GitHub uh, does not get you access everywhere though. For instance, most of the secrets are encrypted using GPG key or eventually owner access on the Azure KMS. So we could use that model, uh, that threat model to if we don't have, a, have any other solution that could be interesting to still see who can access which secrets. However, this is only for the infrastructure scope. Uh, there are still that question to be asked, as you said, to Vadek, because if you are owner, you can inject code on virtually any plugin or part of Jenkins. And that part uh, uh, needs to be bring It's a full control of a system, so all plugins with continuous delivery. Uh, exactly. So uh, all the infrastructure components, including components uh, handling uh, critical credentials, also just uh, access to GitHub organization with uh, potentially personal data, hello GDPR, and other funny things. Yeah. If you uh, I don't say it's not scary. I just say there are mitigation process that could happen for the infra. But yeah, you're you're correct. Uh, that's so. Yeah. Well, like that feels like one for me at least where security team and governance board are both crucial. Just like you said, we've got to have that discussion with them before we would ever consider adding mm -hmm. an additional owner to those, those organizations. Or those, that, that's, a, that's terrifying for me. I'm, I'm not a security expert, but, but just the thought of adding somebody that is not a deeply trusted person strikes fear in my heart. Sorry, I, well, Linux Foundation is a great organization. I don't want to disparage them, but but I, I would really want to understand why and all sorts of other things. Uh, well, it's actually written in the Linux Foundation collateral. So uh, the reasoning for that, that uh, if something happens, uh, then uh, Linux Foundation can take over the project. It's especially important, for example, for sandbox projects, incubating projects, where it's quite common that the project is driven by one company. And basically there is no contingency plan if things uh, go in an expected direction. Oh, okay. uh, so yeah, let's imagine uh, James is starting stop contributing to Jenkins sites, then what? Uh, 
So it's just an example from the CDF space. Uh, and basically, this uh, request makes sense in principle. And uh, this is a requirement for new projects being converted. And uh, I believe that it will be a requirement for the new projects uh, joining uh, the Continuous Delivery Foundation too. They're currently working on this onboarding checklist. Uh, with Jenkins, since it's already onboarded, uh, the situation is a bit more tricky. Uh, and uh, yeah, I guess that saying uh, radical no is not going to be a good answer. Uh, but uh, discussing what would be guardrails, what would be the grace period, what would be actually systems and additional guarantees from the Linux Foundation, uh, all of that is up for negotiation. At a good point, treating uh, also Jenkins CI and Jenkins Infra organization separately because the concerns are different on one and the other, that might also help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, so in my case, of course, Jenkins surf is probably the biggest thing. Jenkins CI, for example, yeah, maintaining of Jenkins file runner, I want to have continuous delivery. I don't want the Linux Foundation to have access to release of this repository. And I, uh, there is an admin account. I have literally no opportunity to prevent that. Uh, so, okay. yeah. Well, I guess I will have to live with that. Uh, but I can understand some maintainers may be quite pissed off by this change if it happens. Particular so, yeah. people who will be definitely pissed off. Uh, so. Thanks for sharing that. I mean, that's a topic for security and governance board now. But yeah, that's interesting I mean, to share it because that effective. will have impact. You want to yeah. get away. <laughs> uh, the election is not finished yet. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, there was no other candidate for infrastructure officer. Unless somebody vetters you due to whatever reason, which doesn't seem to be happening. Um, well, okay. if you have competition for documentation officer and for Jenkins governance. So yep. yeah, it keeps so Mark on his toes, I guess. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> uh, otherwise, uh, a lot of positions, uh, there is no competition. Nice. Okay, I think we can stop recording and sharing. We have reached the end of the notes, unless you have other topics.